So x will equal positive and negative 2. <clears throat> Sometimes we need to solve quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. If it won't factor for you, you can use the formula. So look at the example 2x squared plus 5x minus 8. There are not two numbers that will multiply to give you negative 16 and combine to give you 5. So we can set it up in the quadratic formula. We have identified a, b, and c. So x will equal negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 2 um, times negative 8 all over 4. I always simplify what's under the square root first. It's 89 and then there's no square, um, perfect square in there. So our final answer is negative 5 plus and minus the square root of 89 all over 4. Sometimes we can solve by factoring. So first you want to factor out a greatest common factor if possible. Then you're going to look for two numbers that multiply to give you a times c and add to give you b. And I like to use this little graphic organizer to put the numbers in. Then you're going to rewrite the middle term of the quadratic as the sum of those two numbers that you found. You're going to group the first two and the last two terms together and factor out a greatest common factor. Then factor out the greatest common expression. And finally, set each of those expressions equal to zero and solve if you're asked to solve. So let's factor and solve this quadratic. First, let's pick out a, b, and c. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 12 and combine to give us 8. So I think of my factors of 12, and right away, 2 and 6, I stop. So I'm going to bring down my first term and then rewrite 8x using 2 and 6. Now I'm going to group my first two and my last two terms together. I have a common factor of x in my first two terms, which I'm going to factor out, and I'm left with x plus 2. I have a common factor of 6 in my last two terms, which I'm going to factor out, and I'm also left with x plus 2, and that's what I want. I want a common expression there. Then that gets factored to the front, and I have left x plus 6. So that is factored form. Now to solve, I set each of those equal to 0, and my two solutions are x equals negative 2 and negative 6. So if I were graphing this, parabola, it would open up and it would cross the x-axis at negative 2 and negative 6. Now let's factor a little more complicated quadratic. 2x squared plus 9x plus 10. So we're going to identify a, b, and c and then set up our organizer. So we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us 20 and combine to give us 9. So notice I have my factors of 20 here and the pair that I stop at is 4 and 5. So I'm going to rewrite that as 2x squared and then plus 4x plus 5x plus 10. And then I just do the process over. So group the first two terms together, find a common factor, which is 2x, factor it out. I'm left with x plus 2. I have a common factor of 5. I'm going to factor that out. I'm left with x plus 2. So now do you see my common expression? That comes to the front. And then what's left goes in a parentheses behind. And then set those each equal to 0 and solve. So you'll get x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 5 halves or negative 2 and a half. Now go to number 2 in your EOC pretest packet. We're going to find all the factors of this quadratic. So the first thing we need to do is to move everything over to the left side of the equal sign. So I need to subtract my 3a and add my 3. And then I'm looking for numbers that multiply to give me negative 24 and combine to give me 5. So I go through factors of 24 and I stop at 3 and 8. I realize if my 3 is negative and I add those, I will get positive 5. So here comes the process. We're going to rewrite the first term. We're going to rewrite the middle term using the negative 3 and 8. We're going to draw our little dividing line after the second term, factor out a common factor in our first two and in our last two terms, and then factor out our common expression. In this case, it's 2a minus 3. And I'm going to stop because now I can go and choose my answers. So b and d are my two factors. 
We can complete the square. That's a method to solve a quadratic. So we're going to first write the equation in the form x squared plus bx equals c. So the number goes over to the right, the x terms go to the left. Then we're going to find one half of the b number and square it. Then we're going to factor it. So you can rewrite it as x plus or minus that b number um, divided by 2 squared. And we also have to add it to the right side of the equation. Finally, you're going to take the square root of both sides. And in our example, if you look through it, you can see our solutions are 2 and negative 4. So in your pretest packet, go to number 12. Which equation completes the square to create an equivalent to that? So <clears throat> let's just go through that method of completing the square. We're going to subtract that 13 over. X is on one side, numbers on the other. Our B value is 10. So if we take half of that, that's 5 and square, it's 25. We add it to both sides, and then on the left side, that's going to factor for us as x plus half of our b value. Half of 10 is 5. On the right side, we'll simplify that to 12. And now we can stop, because we've got have our equivalent expression after we've completed the square, which is choice b. Go back to your notes packet, and let's work these practice problems. So it says, which of the following functions is represented by the graph? Well, I'm looking for an equation um, that has a parabola that opens down. So my first number needs to be negative. Also, the last number in a quadratic is where it crosses the y-axis. So I need a negative a value and the number 3 for my c value. So that narrows it down to choices a and b. I look at the graph, and I notice that it is wider than normal. Normally, we go over one space and down one, and we're on the curve, over two and down four. But notice on this one, we only go half as far. So we go over one from the vertex here, and then just down a half to get onto the curve, over two and down two. So that means that this is half, um, the y value is half as far, so it's wider. So B is our answer choice. For a final check, we can take the vertex point to 5. We can plug in 2 and see if we get 5, which we do. Now number 2. So number 2, it says, how would the graph of the function y equals x squared minus 3 be affected if the function were changed to x squared plus 2? So to move from negative 3 up to positive 2, that's our y-intercept, it has to move up 5 steps. So negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. So your answer choice is B. And on number 3, which, uh, what are the solutions of the equation shown? So you're just looking to w see where it crosses the x-axis. And I can see that that's at the x values of negative 4 and negative 6. Number four, which is the correct factorization of that quadratic? So we'll just go through the factoring process, looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 20 and combine to give us negative 19, negative 20 and 1. We'll factor that using the grouping method. So we can factor out a 4x in our first two terms and a positive 1. Then we can factor out our common expression of x minus 5, and we are left with 4x plus 1. So our choice is D, because order doesn't matter in multiplication. <clears throat> Number five, what are the roots? So roots is the same thing as solutions. So we're going to set that equal to zero and solve. So let me back up a little bit for you. First thing is that I'm going to, well, let's try again. I'm going to subtract my 5x over. 5x squared. Then on the right side, I can factor out a common factor. So I'm going to factor out my x. Then, sorry, a little difficulty, set those each equal to 0 and then solve. So x will equal 0 and x will equal negative 1 fifth. So I've got choice B. Lastly, number 6, we're going to solve the equation by completing the square. 
So th first thing we wanna do is move the two x to the left side and the number to the right. Negative two is our b value, so we're gonna take half of b, square it, and that's positive one, and that's a value we're going to add to each side of the equation. On the left side, we can factor that now, and it will factor as, in this case, x minus half of the b value, so x minus one, quantity squared, and on the right side, we will get 16. Then we take the square root of both sides, so x minus one equals positive and negative four, and add one to both positive four and negative four. So our two answers will be five and negative three. Last questions. We're gonna identify the vertex of each of these parabolas and then tell if it's a maximum or a minimum. Super simple. On the number seven, I can see that my vertex is at two, negative nine. And since it opens up, that is the lowest point, so that's a minimum. And then number eight, my vertex is at two, five. And since it opens down, that's the highest point, two, five. All right, that completes your review of um, quadratics for the Algebra 1 and a course assessment. If you'd like more practice, talk to your teacher or Google some of these topics.